Well, welcome. It's good to be together, and glad to have you here tonight. I want to begin with uh, a scripture out of uh, Jonah, chapter 2, that will kind of point the direction, the trajectory for where we're headed tonight. And uh, this is uh, Jonah's prayer. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me, all your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head to the roots of the mountains. I sank down, the earth beneath barred me in forever, but you, brought my life up from the pit, O oh Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes. Lord, we thank you for that truth tonight. We pray that uh, you will help us to not only hear it, uh, but to respond in our hearts and to sing it and pray it and uh, uh, say it to you. And that you would work among us by your Holy Spirit and uh, do the work that you long to do. Shape our thinking and our living according to your purpose. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, well, we, uh, I wanted to do something special tonight. So I, I thought uh, we, we should have a, a choir, and uh, we, you know, we haven't had a choir. Choirs are really fun, and uh, so I decided we'd have a choir. And uh, uh, you, you know where the choir is, don't you? <laughs> I've heard of it. I'm, I'm looking at. Now uh, we have the music. It has uh, it has uh, the parts on there. It's just a hymn, a simple hymn, but a great hymn, and. Um, so those of you that sing parts, either you read it or you you uh, hear a part just to create one. Why you go ahead and uh, you, you create your your parts, uh, sing harmony. Uh, if it's a really unusual part, you might want to sing it softly. But uh, the normal ones, go ahead and sing it. And if you don't sing harmony or read music, that's fine. Just sing the uh, melody. Uh, you, you you probably know this uh, song. And it's a great testimony. It's a, really the, follows the form of a song in uh, praising God, similar kind of movement as the, uh, the uh, song we just read out of Jonah. Praising the Lord for uh, saving uh, us, saving me, and uh, in our time of distress when we're almost going down for the last time we call out to the Lord. Isn't it funny how we always wait until we're almost going down for the last time? And then finally we say, oh Lord, and uh, he says, I've been here all the time, just waiting. And, uh, and then, in this song, one of the things I love, I love about it is, uh, it, it's what it, the, uh, the, the, the power is, the purpose is that is identified as behind our being lifted up, it's love. Uh, it's, it's not God's power, although it is certainly God's power. But it's God's power moved by God's love. What, what, what uh, lifts us, what moves the lift is God's love for us. Everything God does uh, is moved by his love, and so his love uh, lifts us. So I find a part. Uh, Nancy's going to play it through. She's got a little different rhythm here because we want to do something fancy for each other. And uh, so listen to that, just the verse, I think, and then... I'll play it through once, and then we'll first one.
direction tonight. And thinking about folks that are in a particularly challenging places, difficult spots, dealing with the challenging dilemmas, and uh, struggling uh, maybe to find, certainly wrestling with uh, the things that they're facing. And uh, that wouldn't be all of you tonight, but it would be some of us tonight that are in a place where uh, we're trying to find a way through. And uh, so we want to pray for those folks tonight. We want to ask you to identify yourself. And uh, some we, we maybe guess or know, and others we wouldn't need to, but we don't have to know, but God knows. And so we want to find that tonight. There's a, a, a chorus uh, that uh, I, want, I want us to kind of sing together. If you know it, you can sing along with me. And uh, uh, claim it as we go into our prayer time. It's, uh, it's just, of course, the old verse goes like this. He's able, he's able, I know he. Oh, the 
where God is and God is at work. I, I think that's true. I think I know you. I, I know that's certainly the hunger of my heart. That we would be able to move, that I would be able to move to a place where I'm in his presence. And I can sense him moving and I'm, I'm where he dwells and uh, with him I'm, uh, and where he's moving and what he's doing. So these are psalms that are helping us, that can help us to move there. And that's, a, that's the, uh, the purpose for this that uh, we're going to try to pursue. And uh, I've selected uh, five of the 15 uh, to help us to do that. And uh, so we're sort of jumping in, uh, but still these are really five, uh, I think, significant uh, prompters that would move us closer until uh, maybe hopefully at the end we too arrive not in Jerusalem at the temple, but into his presence. Uh, well, that's always my, if in these times together we could just know his presence, we'll, we'll be where we, we need to be. So uh, we have these psalms to help us. So now uh, tonight we're going to start with the 124th psalm. And a psalm that teaches us, uh, I believe, one of the uh, critical, defining, trajectory-setting uh, principles for Christian life, uh, individually and in community. And uh, the lesson that it, it teaches is one that uh, how we learn it and how we live it will uh, go a long way toward uh, kind of uh, determining our, our pathway to God's presence. And hopefully that will be clear. So, uh, Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let me just say it again, what this will say. If the Lord had not been on our side, get the point trying to. If the Lord hadn't been on our side, when men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us, the torrent would have swept over us, the raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to God who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird out of the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Lord, teach us tonight. We're not wise enough, smart enough, clever enough, worthy enough. But your spirit longs to teach us. So we invite you, come into our hearts and minds. Teach us from your word tonight. Make it living and uh, powerful and, and transforming in us tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it makes the point right up front. Here's the, here's the principle. If the Lord had not been on our side, let me say it again. If the Lord had not been on our side. Okay, so that's the that's a critical statement that uh, the psalmist is wanting us to sing, say, live. Uh, if the Lord had not been on our side, what? What's the point? And he gives us a three visual images. Now, it's, it's easier for us. We live in, a, in a, an age where we have uh, amazing visual images, uh, you know, on the, see it on a big screen and all the wild stuff they do and, uh, and what, how they can change folks. Um, I, I've asked uh, Mark to see if we can acquire some software that in the video would you know, kind of soften me up and make it look younger and slower. <laughs> I'm sure it's out there somewhere. So we can do amazing things. So uh, these images, uh, they would have been uh, powerful images for his the hearers, the readers. Uh, but uh, it should be easy for us to imagine. The first one is, they would have swallowed us alive. That imagery is evoking the, what, what swallows you up alive. Well, it would be uh, a, a great serpent, some great animal. So in their world, it would be a serpent, maybe a dragon, but uh, likely a serpent. 
in the ancient world, the Middle Eastern world, the sea was uh, an image of chaos. And uh, in its depths uh, dwelt all kinds of fierce and uh, terrifying creatures. Uh, and uh, sea serpents would be in there. Uh, I don't know, for our area, you, you have to think kind of, of uh, uh, those, those movies where they, the, uh, uh, they, 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 kept, they wake up these uh, creatures in the deep, you know, these Japanese movies usually, right? So the Godzilla and uh, all that, so they come up. So here's the image, here's the, here's the stop frame image that that is trying to evoke. If you can uh, in, uh, in visualize, you've probably seen this in a, a film or something somewhere, where the, this huge creature comes out, a yawning maw, and there's the person, and he's ready to eat them up. Stop them. They would have swallowed us up. The second image is an image of nature so about the referring to the flood, the torrent, the raging waters, about sweeping this away. You, know, you don't normally think of uh, uh, the, the Middle East, Israel, in terms of like raging waters. It's a, a desert climate, and uh, it uh, didn't rain like it does here. Uh, but it's precisely because that's the case that these images would have worked. Uh, if you've ever seen pictures or whatever that they have. Uh, uh, what they call wadis, these, these dry beds, uh, river beds, and they're just, there's nothing there, it's so dry. Except when there is the uh, a rare rain. And then, because it's so dry, it just collects, and those, those become a death trap. And uh, so, if you happen to be in one of those, and out of nowhere, and the rain didn't necessarily happen where you are, stuff streams up. And uh, waves, and this happens in our country, you'll read about it from time to time. There will be, people get caught in a, a river basin, you know, they're kayaking and camping or whatever they are, and, it's, and they're trapped in there. And for one reason or another, there is a torrent of water, 10, 20, 30 feet high wall of water just moving down there, and it, it creates a devastation. So here's the second uh, stop frame. The, the people uh, in uh, the middle of one of those uh, turning to look and seeing uh, a 20 foot wall of water about to sweep them away. The third image is uh, uh, really uh, sort of read back into it is the image of being attracted uh, like a bird in a fowler's snare. So uh, that image is when we're captured when we're in captivity and uh, we don't have a way out, just like that bird. And uh, it's, a, it's an image of being uh, uh, trapped. Uh, we might uh, maybe add to this image here, uh, something we illustrate. So uh, we've all, always, uh, we've seen two, we saw, I'm assuming you've seen too many movies like I have or TV shows. And uh, the hero or whoever is captured is in a dungeon or somewhere and uh, they've uh, put chains on him and all that. And after they leave him there, he looks around. Now, if it's, uh, if it's James Bond, he finds a little thing and gets out. But if it's not James Bond, it's, uh, they look through and they try to find him. There's this point where he realizes, I can't break free. And his shoulders slump, his head goes down because He's a hero, but he can't break free. Stop for him. So if the Lord had not been on our side, what is all three? All three of those images are dramatic, powerful, visual images of a situation in which the risk was so high, the danger was so extreme, we were at a place where we were helpless. If that big, if that big servant has you uh, on the tip of his tongue, uh, uh, your lunch. There's nowhere to go. And if you've got that 30 foot wall of water behind you, you're just going to be swept wherever it wants to take you. And if you are trapped in captivity in ways that you, you have no resource to set you free, then you are a prisoner uh, until, you, until something else happens. 
They're images of life where, where we are uh, uh, in, in a place where we are absolutely overwhelmed and overcome. The resources that we have are in no way adequate to deal with the challenge. We are, we are going to lose and lose badly. And if we move past the stop frame, it ends with our loss, our death, our destruction. Let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, the movie would have been moving past the stop frame. But he was. And it didn't. And in the God's vision of this movie, you know, however you visualize it, some of you have sort of uh, creative minds for this, I'm sure. But uh, that serpent, no matter how big it is, all, all of a sudden, it's uh, tame, it's taken away or whatever, we're still standing. And uh, that, that uh, wall of water, however it happens, it just divides and goes around us or however that happens. And, it goes past and we're still standing. And despite the, uh, the chains or the manacles or whatever is holding us fast, they just fall away and we walk away free. The psalmist is trying to portray images of life experience where we're not just distressed, we're not just sort of at risk, but we're not sort of facing trials and troubles. But we're at a place where it's over. Uh, we've used everything we got. We've done everything we can do. We don't have anything left. And there's nothing to uh, stand between us and uh, the inevitable conclusion of this story. Except the Lord is on our side. So the psalmist, the psalmist is, is uh, trying to uh, use these powerful graphic images to illustrate this principle, to remind the people of Israel, remember, there have been those kinds of times. You remember the time we were trapped along the uh, Red Sea and Red Pharaoh's army was coming and uh, we were trapped and we were all going to die. In fact, that's what they were all saying though. Moses, what, what have you done? We are all going to die. And, uh, but it didn't turn out that way. God was to the sea. Pharaoh learns that uh, he's picked the wrong guy to mess with. Remember in our story that there have been times, it was, we're not talking about stories where we kind of rallied. We're not talking about stories where we kind of discovered we have resources. It's not, it's, it's not stories where we discovered well, if we help each other, we can make, it's not that kind of story. Those are great stories. Those are uh, wonderful stories, true stories, but they're not these stories because these stories are stories about the places where there's not a thing we can do. And we discover that when we are there, God is enough to change the story. Now, uh, at one level, we could hear this psalm uh, teaching us, reminding us that as pilgrims making our way, to where God leads us, that uh, even when we are in difficult situations, uh, God can deliver us. And that's a true message. But it seems to me that there's more going on here. This is, this is act, uh, after all, a pilgrim song. It, the message of it is, is to move us, not just to sort of uh, reassure us or comfort us or help us to uh, be confident on the journey, but to move us toward God's presence. So what is it saying to us? And I think, I think he's trying to communicate to us, draw us into a vision of life uh, lived, as I described, on the edge. Life in, in, in these kinds of places. And discovering that when we are there, God is able. Now, I, I, I think, I've come to believe uh, pretty strongly that learning to live out in that place, that place, that is, that place where there's nothing between you and catastrophe, 
Nothing between you and total loss. Nothing between you, 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 don't, you don't have any more resources, you don't have any more strength, you don't have any more, and uh, there is nothing between you and the cataclysm except that God is with you. That learning that you can live there is, is uh, a, a critical, decisive uh, uh, part of, of tapping into all that God has for you as a person or in community. Most people, churches, live within uh, the range of their uh, assembled resources or ability. And uh, they may uh, rally that, and they, I, I don't mean, I'm not being critical now of them, and, uh, you know, they're trying to bring that into play, but they measure like up to here, and uh, no further. And, and what I want to say is the, the key to un, unleashing God's power in your life and in the church is stepping over that line and stand in that place. Uh, I, I experienced a, a really profound lesson of that. I, I have shared this story in different places, different times. Uh, uh, most of you experienced it with me. But it was in the early days at North Raleigh and uh, we, we were gonna take our first work and witness trip. And uh, so it was a big challenge. I think by that time we were around a little bit over 200, which is a nice size, but we were taking, we, we wanted to take our own working with this trip, which is pretty exceptional for a church that size. And uh, so we put it off once because we didn't have the money, and then, and then uh, we decided, well, we're never going to have the money. <laughs> so if this is something God wants us to do, then let's do it. And uh, at the time, some of you might remember, at the time, it was uh, you, you had to raise ten thousand dollars for materials at that time, and uh, the people who would be going for the church, we, we were going to send a team, and that would mean at least another twenty thousand that they would have to come up with. So people in the church they to come up with at least thirty thousand dollars for this. And at the time, we were ten thousand dollars in the red in our operating expenses, which uh, for our budget, I mean, that's never good, but for our budget then that was half a month or I mean, it was a significant amount of money that we were behind and uh, so uh, to all appearances it was a really uh, terrible time to be taking on some venture like a work and notice trip and there were very reasonable people at the time that <laughs> took exception to uh, making that move and, th and they and logically they were right but uh, we felt that God was calling us to do this. And so we, the board supported, we launched the thing, announced it, did the campaign. We had to, like about four months, I think, to raise the $10,000. If we didn't have it by the end of the, if we had to send a certain period of time ahead of time, so we had to have it by this date in order to do the trip. So we had to raise the money. And so for that next then uh, three or four months, we're watching where it went. Now, in my idea of timing, after we take such a bold step of obedient faith, the next week, God just, you know, dumps gold coins and whatever, however he does it, and blesses us for our, for our willingness, and we celebrate. Uh, God's idea of timing and mine have never quite coincided. And we went a long time, we, I mean, several months. We're, we're looking, and uh, after we get the count, uh, the financial count on Monday morning, I'd have a breakfast with uh, Larry and Dave. We'd look at that and uh, wonder whether this was the time where we should start sending out resumes. <laughs> uh, you know, the Lord was just really slow. We came right up to the end of the, that time period. The last Sunday, the uh, 
the last of the $10,000 for the project came in. And on that Sunday, we moved into the black. The Lord provided the $10,000 that we didn't have, and we're giving it away. And we stepped into that next future. Now, I believe, uh, really, with all my heart, that, that part of what North Raleigh became uh, was grounded there. It was a step. Because we learned we could, we could move out where we had to say, if the Lord's not on our side, if the Lord doesn't come through, we're done. If the Lord doesn't provide, we're lost. And we can live there because God is able. And I think a lot of the things that we did after that, uh, to some meaningful degree, you know, worked their way from that. Because of the lesson that the psalmist is trying to teach in Psalm 124, uh, if you want to get to the place where God is, you have to get to the place where you're willing to be alone totally dependent on his provision and protection, where Israel can has to say, if the Lord is not on our side, we're lost. But he is, <laughs> and we're not. Most churches never learn that lesson. I just think that's true for all different kinds of reasons. It's just our natural trying to be prudent, not reckless all that stuff. And so our vision, our ability to move into a, a other levels of what God can do are inhibited. And then, and then they look at uh, another place, like the things that were happening in the world are saying, well, how come God is blessing them in such a, what makes them so special? Well, in part, it's because uh, we're willing to live where we're in radical dependence, in, in radical obedience, and believe God is going to do what uh, needs to happen. Now, now, no one are reckless. I don't mean we go out and like, you know, buy a bunch of stuff and then send God the bill. It's not, it's not like, like my kids. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, when we feel like God, uh, God uh, is calling us to something, when we're being obedient to what he wants us to do, that needs to be clear. We're not just uh, uh, presuming here. But I, but I think God always wants to call us there. Mm -hmm. Because until we get there, he can't really, he can't really uh, release us. He wants us to be there. Because then we find out, you know, the truth is, we are more secure here than we ever were back there. <laughs> when we added up all of our bank accounts, you know, I think we got enough money. Now, our money's not enough. The, the, only, the only money that can help us is God's bank account. And <laughs> golly, <laughs> there's enough in there. God's power, God's grace. It, now, it isn't always easy. The timing doesn't always work right. There are bumps along the way. There's all that kind of stuff. I don't want to... I paint it simply as, a, you know, a, a sort of a, a, a gift blessing kind of. It doesn't work like that. But it is, it is to say that on our way to where God is present and where his power and blessing are at work, part of getting there is getting to the place where you, you go through the places in faith where you say, if the Lord had not been on our side. Let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, but he was. And we have the conclusion of the song, our help, this is our conclusion, of our discovery, our experience, our help, our reliable help, our certain help, our more than adequate help, our abundant help, is in the name of the Lord, who made it all, and he's at work for us. Now tonight, as we conclude this, I, I uh, mostly we've just been doing this kind of as teaching, so these are teaching kind of moments and opportunities, but it seems to me that uh, 
Beyond that, I, I want to challenge you here in this. God wants to move us out into that place. He, he wants to move you out into that place. And it's not my, it's not my place to tell you what that means for you. Uh, and uh, it, it may be that for us together in some way, he's calling us to something. I don't know what that would be. It's not my place to name it or define it. But if he's calling me somewhere, I want to be hearing it. I want to be saying, Lord, I'll, I'll step out there. I'll be at risk for you because I, I can trust you. And if there are ways that God is working in us or in you. So tonight as we close, I just want to challenge you to be uh, in, in this prayer. For you to be a praying to say, oh Lord, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to step out? And uh, maybe it'll be immediately clear. Maybe you know already. Maybe he's been speaking to you. Or maybe you'll know right away when you pray. Or maybe it will take some time. Maybe uh, it will take being open to that and, and seeking that. And say, Lord, uh, help me now this week. And as I wait before you, help me to see. I don't want to create something. I don't want to artificially uh, create a, a reckless challenge or do th something just to do it. I want, I want to be responding to your call, hearing your voice, and stepping where you would want me to go. So, Lord, help me to wait before you. And I think if we do that, he's faithful. Uh, sometimes more faithful than we want him to be. <laughs> Say, well, okay, since you asked. Uh, as it so happens, I have this in mind. But uh, the Lord is on our side. So let's pray together. Lord, we are so grateful and we think back on our history, both uh, together and in, in our individual lives, and we, we can remember uh, scenes and images and experiences where we could say with Israel, if the Lord had not been on our side. Oh, if the Lord had not been on our side. But, but praise God, he was. And our help comes from our God, the maker of heaven and earth. It did then, it does now, it will, wherever God leads us to go. So Lord, I pray that you would move us. I pray that you would prompt me. And I don't have any idea what that means, but I, I want to say, Lord, I, I want to be open. Show me the way you want me to go. I've walked in it before. I, wa I want to walk in it again. If you just show me where you want me to go, what you want me to do, and help me to make that step. And I pray you'd help us all to do that, and for you to speak clearly, and help us to hear your voice, and to know your leading. That you would help us to move into your presence, into the experience of the overflow of your blessing, in ways that only happen here. Lord, thank you for our time together tonight with these precious friends and brothers and sisters and for the gift that that is uh, to me. And, uh, I pray that you would bless each one, bless our fellowship together tonight. And uh, Lord, bless your work in us and through us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Uh, uh,